It is roundup time. Brian's roundup. No, that's terrible. Roundup time is a time in which we do multiple games in one review, quickly going over them, giving you a quick overview of those. You've seen that before. This is my first roundup, and we're taking a look at four games today, and you'll notice a theme in two of these games that they have to do with each other. First, let's take a look at Disney Dixit. This is the newest edition of Dixit. Let me just preface this by saying I have never played Dixit before this. I don't know how I missed the boat on that. Now, I played Mysterium and all those, of course, and I'll definitely be using these cards in Mysterium, but never played this one before, never played Dixit. So let's take a look at what Disney Dixit is. We'll come back, talk final thoughts. All right, so this is Disney Dixit laid out right here on the Jasper. We have got a game all about giving clues that are Obscure, but obscure enough to where you want some people to get it, but not everybody to get it. It's a points-based game on that. Now, I have not played any Dixit games before this, but I'm a Disney mark, huge Disney mark, especially Disney Parks mark. So I was very excited, and so were the kids when this came to us. So, on the art for the cards, you know you have the weird, kind of whimsical, obscure Disney art, but these are just fantastic. And they range from all the movies that some of them you don't even expect, like Treasure Planet and... Uh, what's the other one like Treasure Planet that was so good? Atlantis, right? And that one. One of my favorite movies of all time. But you've got all of these wonderfully whimsical cards featuring Disney art all throughout it. How about that? A little Chernabog action, I believe. Maybe? Maybe not? Maybe not. Yeah, uh, Black Cauldron. What am I thinking? Close enough. Horned, horned guy. Anyway, these are all the cards. And what you're going to do on your turn is you're going to have a stack of six of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, when you were the storyteller... You are going to be putting out a single card and giving a clue. Now, the clue could be a single word. It could be um, a phrase. So, let's try something right here. Let's try uh, longing. So, longing. Here's a good one. They're longing to find their friends. We'll put this out here as our clue. Then everyone else will take a clue from theirs that they think would also match that. Because essentially, what you're trying to do is get everyone to guess your card. And you are trying to guess the correct card. Obviously, you know yours is not the card that you put out there, or that the storyteller put out there. So these will be our choices here. They'll lay around the board just like this. You'll take your time, you'll look at them, and then you will take your voting token here based on your, your characters. We've got Tinkerbells here. You'll select, hmm, longing. I think they were trying to say, oh, number one, obviously. So everybody votes, you turn it over. Now, here's some tricky rules. If everyone guesses it correctly, the storyteller does not get any points, but everybody else gets two points. If no one guesses it correctly, the storyteller gets no points, and everyone else gets two points. If some people guess it correctly, those who guessed it correctly get three points each, and the storyteller will get a point per correct guess. But also, if someone guesses your card because they thought that's what the right answer was, you'll get a point for that. You'll play until someone reaches 30 points. person with the most points is the winner. So that's Disney Dixit. Now, it is a judgment-based game or a voting game, a game in which you have to choose. Well, I bet they meant that by this. Now, depending on who you play this with, you can get super obscure with your Disney knowledge and knowing that people will go, ooh, I can put my card in here. First of all, the art in this game is amazing. I love looking at these images because they're all Disney-related. Some of them are really obscure, like the Black Cauldron and my personal favorite, Sword in the Stone, right? So the art in this game is great, the concept is good, and you can play this with many ages of kids. We play it with our five and nine-year-olds, so that tells you pretty wild. And the five-year-old is pretty wily at this game. She's pretty good at it, actually. But that's Disney Dixit is a quick game. I really like this. I think that this is the quintessential version of Dixit, in my opinion, for our family, because we love Disney parks and all that sort of stuff. So Disney Dixit, big win. I highly recommend. If you like Dixit, definitely get this one. If you haven't played Dixit before and you're just like Mysterium and all those, get this for the art of these cards alone. So Disney Dixit, thumbs up from me. Now let's move over to our second game. This is Everything Ever. This is a party trivia game. Now, this is where that preface came in in the intro of the video that two of these are going to have a theme. This is the first game that has this theme, and that will be I'd rather play the game my way as opposed to the rules itself. Let's take a look at everything ever, how it plays. We'll come back, talk what I'm talking about when I'm talking about it. All right, this is everything ever. Not all at once, though, but just it is everything ever. This is a party game you've been preparing for for your whole life. That is literally what it says. But basically, this is a game in which you're going to be playing trivia back and forth until someone kind of falls out. And basically, you win by having the most knowledge of everything ever. Now, that sounds like I'm oversimplifying it, but really and truly, you're going to get a stack of cards which allow you to change the category. You're going to put a thing out here first, every James, and then we'll put every character who can fly. Yes, ever. And you'll go back and forth around the table trying to name them. Now you have to name one for each category. And if you fail to name one, you have one of two choices. You can either put one out of your hand down there, say, okay, I don't know any more James, let's go with every princess, right? 
and you'll start um, giving those. Now, if you run out of those, you're going to eventually have to take the cards stacked on there as a penalty, and the person with the most cards at the end will obviously lose the game. And you're going to play a certain stack of these cards. You're not going to play through every one of them. And you'll keep going back and forth. Okay, uh, Diana, Wendy, and then somebody else will go. If you're able to name a category for both of these, so let's think for a second here. Every princess, every character can fly. Nope, let's keep going here. Let's try something else. <laughs> every bird. Here we go. So, um, Scuttle from the Little Mermaid. So it's a, per a character who can fly, but also a bird. So then I would take, discard one of my penalty cards, and then I would put a third one out here, expanding this out to where you have to go boom, boom, boom. Also, you're going to need 10 seconds to do this. Now, here we go. We could do Toucan Sam. Boom! That's all three of those, and you put another one out. Every emotion. A sad Toucan Sam. No, I don't know, but... You have 10 seconds to do your turn. Now, you'll have to take a penalty. Now, if someone says something that's not quite right, everybody can hit them with a, I'll allow it, but watch yourself, counselor. And then finally, if you get a year out of order, they say, nope, that doesn't work. Take the penalty pack. But that's how you play everything ever. So that's everything ever. Now, what I'm saying is, is that this can take too long. Now, yes, there's a 10 second timer, but you kind of feel like a jerk every time. Be like, all right, you're 10 seconds up, you lose. Oh, crap, I just didn't, even, we were talking, we were chatting. It's a party game, right? So even though it's a party game, you kind of have to be pretty serious about the timing or this will stretch on in ad finitum because people will, for instance, there are some clues in here that are silly because, again, this is where house rules come into this game. Every character who can fly, every bird, every, you know, you can start naming anything that flies, any bird. Well, both of those categories, except for penguins, ostriches, emus, and rias, 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 I don't know what they're called, can fly. So you can just repeat the same things and it gets dull if everybody's like blue egret, red heron, blue heron, multiple times for two different categories. So the only thing is, yes, you could cover that up, but you're covering it up at your own expense because you're using one of your cards. So what I say is I would rather just play this game. Let's pick a category, turn it over, and whoever give, taps out first of that category loses. Kind of like Blockbuster, because when we were in high school, that's what we did. We sat on buses and we would just name a, an actor and we would go back and forth until Andy or I could not name an act, a movie that that actor had been in. So what I would rather do with this is grab a couple cards, throw them on the table, and play Whoever is the last person standing on that category keeps the card. Play to 13. I don't know. It's not in the rules, but that's how I'd play this game. Which takes us to Timeline Twist. This is a game based on the old Timeline game. Now, Timeline was one of the first games I ever bought in hobby gaming because it was widely available. I hated the 10. Of course, I'm glad this one doesn't have a 10. It says 20 minutes. That's about right. Two to six players. Really? You'll see what I'm about to say in a second. There's no limit to that, actually. But Timeline Twist, let's take a look at how it plays. We'll come back, talk final thoughts. Okay, so this is Timeline Twist. Now, if you've ever played the original Timeline, this is going to play a whole lot like it. So you'll sit one card here, date side up, what was released in Jurassic Park. Quick, anybody know it? Yes, that's right, 1993. I knew that before I looked. And then you're going to have four cards in front of you. Your job is to put a card to the right time of this timeline. So, for instance, first bottle of cola is sold. We'd obviously know this goes to the left of this. Where this takes a turn and a little bit different is that instead of just placing it, okay, we'll move this down. If you know, okay, well, I know a date is in between these, I would put this Statue of Liberty, that's 1885, so it's here. So let's just say, okay, well, I know this goes between these. Well, you would actually put it in the row above here, not just there, because you're going to keep expanding out that row and putting cards between things. So you're either going to play a card to the right of the timeline, or to the left of the timeline, or to the between row. Now, if there, for instance, is a card already in the between row that fills that gap, you can't put it there. Which means that this is actually a really bad setup here, because now we really can't put anything in between 1993 and 1885. But you have to put your cards to the left of it if it's all the way to the left, if it's older than everything in the timeline, and on the right if it's older, it's newer than everything in the timeline. So. This actually wouldn't work. This would mess us up. Now, if you were to manage here, you can discard. Say, okay, I don't have this. You look at the symbol in the discard pile on the back. If you have a symbol with that symbol on it, on your dark side here, you can put it down. And when you, or sorry, on your light side here, you can put it on top of that. So these don't match, so I could not discard this card onto that. However, I could discard, let's just find one here. Boy. Well, anyway, you get the idea. You discard on top of that gets cards out of your hand. The goal is to play until everybody has all the cards out of their hands, and then you do a, you know, ignoramus type scoring. Now, you can also play competitively, where you just play old school timeline as well, where you put it in the correct temporal line, essentially showing you that you can play the old timeline game with this. So, that is how you play Timeline Twist.
So that's Timeline Twist. Now this one is interesting because the mechanic that forces you to be out of the game early is if someone puts that between card up there too early, well, then you're jacked up because then you can only play left or right. Or if they play one from 1899 and your next one is 1993, that's a problem too. So you kind of have to be strategic about how you play this. Now, what I do like is the back of the rules show you that you can just play traditional timeline, which is my favorite version of this. And I will probably just play this as timeline in which you lay out cards. Everybody get some cards in their hand. You'll lay out cards, try to be out first essentially by putting them wherever you want, wherever they go. And if you're wrong, you have to take the card, uh, take another one back into your hand. So the person who gets out of their hand first wins the game. But then there's no restrictions on a between row. You just literally slide the cards down and put them where they go on the line. I like that version of the timeline better. I get they're trying to do something different here and make it a cooperative game in which you are limited by not just your knowledge, but also placement. You have to be strategic about how you place it. Me personally, I'd rather just play timeline, even though this is a pretty neat game. Which takes us to our last game, Cover Your Cookies. This is a game all about crumble cookies, which are delicious, by the way. And no, they're not a paid advertiser. But if you want to sponsor this video, Crumble, looking at you, I got one in town. I will come in today and gladly eat a quarter of a cookie because if I eat an entire cookie, I'll die. They're so big and delicious. But Cover Your Cookies, let's take a look at what it does. We'll come back, talk final thoughts. All right, this is Cover Your Cookies. Bye. Crumble cookies. Let's face it, these things are amazing. They're also like a giant cake or pie completely. So if you eat an entire cookie at one sitting, you're going to feel bad later. But you have five cards in your hand. Essentially, you're trying to pair up cards to make batches of cookies, or you can use milk because it's wild. So let's just say we put our two cotton candy cookies out here, which my kids would love. Boom, that's my first batch. Now, that batch cannot be stolen. However, let's just say I have now have a batch of frosted animal cookie. Boy, that's my second batch. Now, this could be stolen. Let's just say I did it this way, though. Sorry. So now this is my second batch. That could be stolen. The way that is stolen is someone else can attempt to play that same type of card or milk. You can defend that. So they say, okay, boom, I'm trying to steal your cookies. Boom, you play that, or they play that. You could then defend if you had another the same cookie or milk. If you don't, well, they take that from you. Now, when you get stolen from, you move this up the track here giving you more points. So it's kind of a benefit to those who get stolen from constantly. You can actually get a lot of points if you're the most stolen from. There are mixer cards in here, which will trigger actions like rotate. So everybody will switch the top batch to the person to the left. There's an enhanced mixer card, all sorts of things. You'll play until the end of the game in which all the mixer cards have happened, or there are other couple variants as well. Play as many rounds until somebody hits 750. Play best of two rounds, best of three rounds. You'll count up your points, which are total at the bottom. Person with the most points wins the game. So that's Cover Your Cookies. It is reprinted of Cover Your Assets, I believe. This is, uh, this is, uh, yeah, Grandpa Bat Games. It's pretty simple. You're making pairs, and then you're taking pairs from other people. It can get a little cutthroat, except it benefits you if you get stolen from. So it's not the most cutthroat thing in the world. Really and truly, it's just a numerical cut. It doesn't matter the theme. This could be called Cover Your Zoo, Cover Your Archaeological Artifacts, Cover Your... Um, I don't know, cover your board games, cover your books, cover your movies. It could be any, it doesn't matter. The theme is irrelevant other than, boy, those cookies look delicious, right? And you can buy this in Crumble Cookies. But the theme is irrelevant, but the game is pretty simple. You're making pairs, trying to pair it up, draw cards, you know, get other people's cards, play to certain points. It's pretty simple. And it's not my style of game that I would normally play and sit down and be like, oh, let's play Cover Your Cookies. Can't wait to play it. I'd rather play Timeline or even everything ever the way I would play it over this. But of course, I'm going to play Disney Dixit above any of these three games, but cover your cookies for your audience, for the people that you know you're going to be playing it with. It's an interesting concept. It might be better to go ahead and go to crumble, buy the cookies, eat them while playing this because then you have some sort of enjoyment with it because really and truly these aren't even their best flavors. Cotton candy. Ugh, disgusting. But cover your cookies. It is what it is. Not something I'm going to play all the time. Probably rarely play it unless the girls ask to play it because they like cookies and they like games that are pretty simple in rules. So that's a roundup today. We've covered four games, Disney Dixit, Everything Ever, Timeline Twist, and Cover Your Cookies. If you enjoyed this, I'll be putting out two at least, maybe three roundups a month. And we'll chop these up and put them where they go. Joey, you know where they go. Talking to you now, Joey. Love you, bud. Anyway, I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Also, check out the new 8-Bit Tom shirt. Get your pre-order in now as those will start producing very soon, as well as some more special announcements coming up merch-wise. We will see you next time.